we are going to be examining this question here. Is it the job of our schools to teach our children values? So throughout the next 18 minutes, we're going to be giving our different opinions and points of view, and hopefully the answer to the question will become clearer. So welcome, my name is Cindy Harper. I work at St. Mary's University, and I work in the RE department, providing teacher education, and for those who'd like to be a teacher in RE. And just like Cindy, I also work in the RE department here at St. Mary's University. And we are part of a double act working with primary RE. As well as being um, a lecturer here at St. Mary's University, I was also a primary school teacher for a very long time. In fact, 25 years. Um, and during that time, I spent a lot of my career in Islington, the littlest, tiniest borough right in the heart of London. And I loved it. Um, and during that time, I was also a deputy head for a number of years. And similarly to Sarah, I've been a deputy head and I've been a teacher for a very long time, both in the States and here in the UK, all of which in, during that time I enjoyed so much of it, working with children. In addition to that, I have two young boys myself, two teenagers, who keep me very busy. And just like Cindy, if you've seen what we're doing now, is I also have two children. Uh, I have girls, I have a teenager, and I have a teenager, just in between 10 and 13. And as well as being a mother, I'm also, I have that other job of being a wife. So you can see that we have a lot of similarities. And in these similarities, I too am a wife and a busy mom and all of those things that go together. But working at St. Mary's University, it is a Catholic institution. And in addition, I'm also a Catholic. And like Cindy, I'm also a Catholic. So as you can see from our introduction, we have many similar core values. And that's why, although we've actually only worked together for a year, it has been a really good working relationship. I've thoroughly enjoyed working with Cindy. And I think that's because many of our core values are very similar. So starting our jobs in 2020 is when we started working together. We have endured the pandemic. Most of our job have been together, has been online, teaching hundreds of lectures from our kitchens and our home offices. And it's nice to be working together in person and talking about something that we're quite passionate about. And we're talking about our core values. And just to bring in, FPV is a core word in education, fundamental British values. And just a little bit of background, I've been a teacher all my life. I've taught since I was a young child, teaching other children other things. I've also been in school or I've been a learner from the very beginning. And it's really important, those things, because it is part and parcel of who I am. Having started my career as an educator, a teacher in the States, and coming from a small Midwestern town where I was part of a big family and we worked together, and our values were very much part and parcel of what my life was. Having grown up in a household with my grandmother, there was great respect for everyone in our homes. I moved to the UK in 1993, and during that time, I transitioned to a lot of changes. There's changes in language. We have words like rubber or words like pants, or even the word fanny or fanny pack came to a big surprise to me. But it was often the way in which people referred to older people in the generation of wrinklies. And I found that very challenging because I was taught that anyone with life experience was to be treated with great respect. And those are just some of the things that challenged me. But in addition, as you can see from the slide, is acronyms in education are huge. There are words like EAL, EYE, HLTA, CAMS, CATS. There are over 250 different acronyms that we as teachers work with day in, day out. Now the DFE or the DFES, they can't even decide what they would like to be called, work on fundamental British values, FBV. In SMSC, which is the spiritual, moral, social, and cultural education of our children. But FPV, the fundamental British values, are part of the teaching standards. And as we train teachers, part two of the standards have five core values. Now these five core values link to, one, the rule of democracy, that we have the right to vote as democracy, yes or no. The rule of law, that you and you and you, we should all follow the law. Tolerance, the middle finger rising up above. We need to be tolerant of people's individual differences 
things that are different in their cultural or their religious beliefs. Respect, where we wear our ring, respect for one another, respect for our loved ones, respect for the environment, general respect. And the little one, the little finger, or you or me, is our right of liberty. Now, part two of the standards goes into great depth of working with those core values. And teachers, like us, or teacher trainees in the school must fulfill part two of the teaching standards of fundamental British values. And we are measured against that. And once upon a time, when I said I moved to the UK, the first few months of my teaching career, I was referred to as a septic tank. Now, as a young person who was a bit unfamiliar with things, I found that difficult because I had no clue why. And once I learned and had a friendship with one of the teachers, I asked, why was I called a septic tank? And they told me, because I'm a yank. Cockney rhyming slang, septic tank, yank. Now, I question whether that teacher had four values of respect and respected that who I am by calling me something like a septic tank. So, following on from what Cindy said, let's get back to our core question, which is, is it the job of our schools to teach values? Well, I think as we revisit this question, we could say, is it the job of RE? But it's actually so much bigger than that. It's far bigger than RE. You see values on the mission statements of schools. You see values um, within the websites. Values are at the core of a school. And I think if we take the example of a Catholic school, this is a, a typical faith school, and this is actually the mission statement of my youngest daughter's school. And if we look at the bottom here, it says, with Jesus as our guide. Now, that's what makes the Catholic school different because the gospel values are at the heart of a Catholic school. And while we think about values in Catholic education, we could say that, well, we can say that Catholic schools were in fact some of the first schools that were set up here in this country. And in order to have the Catholic schools, we of course needed to have the teacher training colleges. And here in St Mary's was one of the first to be set up in 1850. Now, the values of St Mary's in 1850 I'm sure some of them, the core values, will be similar to what they are today, but some will also be very different. And maybe that's part of the problem. That is, that values change. And as values change, that sometimes makes it difficult to teach them. If we go back to our Catholic example, there are some parts of society that will say Catholic schools are about indoctrination. Some people do still believe that. Catholic schools are in actual fact some of the most ethnically diverse schools in our country. And of course, they teach, as Cindy said, the fundamental British values, the gospel values, the core values, but also interest in character development and the commandment of love. This is um, an image of my daughters. But having had the um, experience um, of working in both Catholic education and non-faith schools, I can say wholeheartedly that the commandment of love and character development is evident in all the schools I've taught in. You can see the love between the teacher and the pupil every day. You can see the love that the teacher puts into each and every lesson they plan. And you can see the love of the learning of the children in the class. Now, when I was um, preparing for this TED talk, I decided to ask someone who had a big influence on my life and my values, particularly my professional values, uh, and that is the head teacher I worked with in Islington. So I said to her, as a Catholic head, what were your core values? And she said it was to love God and to love her neighbour. And she talked about that being the love of the pupils in her school, the love of the staff, the love of the parents. But what I particularly loved about what she said was, that she said that love was like maybe the love you have for a teenager. Now, everyone anyone who's ever had a teenager, and of course we've all been teenagers, knows that sometimes teenagers are wonderful, they're very easy to love, but sometimes they can be a little bit more tricky. So let's moving on now to the values here at St Mary's University. Inclusiveness, generosity of spirit, excellence, and respect. And respect is something that comes up time and time again. As Cindy said, it's in the fundamental British values. And we often see it on websites and we see it in mission statements. 
But what we're really interested in, both Cindy and myself, is not always those outward facing values that are written down. We're also interested in the values that you can feel. So at St Mary's, can you feel those values? Or at your institution where you work, can you feel the values? So does this maybe bring a different dimension to our question as well, that values are also modelled? Does that make it even harder, possibly, to teach them? Now, Sarah said that implicit, explicit value set. I asked my boys about their values, and my younger son stated his core value was freedom. Now, maybe that's a symptom of the time in which we're living in, because some of his freedoms have been curtailed. I asked my older son, who's almost 16, and he said he doesn't have any. And again, is that his age and the way he's changing and things like that? And my husband, his core value is integrity. And I must say, if someone that I know well and spend a lot of time with, especially for the past year and a half, is that everything he does is with integrity, from his job to his family, all done with integrity. Now, he and I are our children's first teachers. And we are the first people who build those fundamental British values or building blocks for our children. Whose job is it, is our question. Is it the job of the parents? Is it the job of the school? Is it the job of TikTok? Or is it the job of social media, which our children have great access to? And that's really important that we know that actually as parents, we are the beginning building blocks. Martin Luther King stated, intelligence is not enough. Intelligence, character, and values, that's the goal of education. And as an educator of children of my own and of children in school, I recognize how important my role is. But like myself, 37% of the population in London is foreign born. Now, if we are, we are foreign born, how does that work with fundamental British values? Because if we look at the chart of the 2020 value culture map, this shows globally that values are different wherever you are born or wherever you live. Now, for us in the UK, and I'll count myself living here because I've been here a long time, we are secular self-expressive values, as the circle on the, on the PowerPoint shows. And that's because we value choice, we value equality, autonomy, and tolerance. Those are part and parcel of the fundamental British values and the core values here. Other countries, and maybe some of those represented in that 37%, are traditional or survival values. Now, they are obedience, religion, and security, security for themselves. So there's a huge challenge. If we are going to have fundamental British values, but up to 37% of our population is not British, how can our schools, or here at teacher training, blanket those values to them. So there is a conflict in there as well. So Cindy spoke a lot about fundamental British values and how important it is to teach our children values, which is our core question today. But what we're also interested in is the values of our teachers and our student teachers. And because teachers model values, surely that's something we should really focus on. Now, during lockdown, I found this lovely place, really close to where I live. I didn't even know that was there. And it's a lovely place, really quiet, tranquil. But that's because I had time to reflect. And this is what we want our teachers, and for us, as educators in university, we want our student teachers to do. We want them to reflect on their values. Now, values change, as we said before. Your values have probably changed since you were a child. And have your values changed since the pandemic? We haven't all had COVID-19, but we've all lived through the pandemic. We've had to wear face masks, we've had to social distance. Some of us haven't seen our loved ones for a very long time. Has that possibly changed some of our values? So one of my favorite RE writers is Trevor Coolin. And he says, people are influenced by their environment and they want to make sense of it. So therefore, if we have two people of the same faith living in different environments, does that mean that they're trying to make sense of that environment, they have different values? So self-understanding and reflection is really important. And 
Have you actually stopped to think about what your core values are? As I said before, we get our student teachers to reflect on their lesson plans, but maybe we should spend a little bit more time asking them to also reflect on their values, how their values have impacted their lesson plans, how much of themselves is in their teaching, and do they know how to make those professional judgments, and for that case, to actually teach values education. So to conclude, it's an exciting time in values education and RE. What values should we teach? Should we give our children more time to reflect? Should we give our teachers more time to reflect as well? Values influence both the small and the large parts of our lives. Thinking back to when you got up today to now, how much of your values impacted all the small things that you've done today? Now, as a little bit of homework, because we're teachers and in true teacher style, coming to the end, values education, the conclusion is it's the job of the family, the parents, the school, the institution, the businesses, the sports, the clubs. It is all our responsibility. We are contenders in the fight to ensure values are taught. Now, your homework today is we have spoken about our values today. My core value being respect. My core value is kindness. And if we look at that, we talked about them, we would like you to go away and we would like you to live your values.